All right, the tournament has ended. So, spoiler can... alert, you know. <laughs> We, we already know who's won. And to me, it's not really surprising that he's won. It's surprising that he's come out of retirement for this... Uh, I, 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 was he out of retirement before this tournament? Perhaps just a little bit? But I, I have not been seeing anything from Schwenigan, uh until today. And so, yep. so ha having him back is re really kind of cool because, you know, we, we get these uh, very interesting games because we, we get to see so somebody who understands predicting your opponent's moves to such, to such an extreme level that it's very hard to play against him. Hmm. So... Anyways, the picks here. Um, Schwenigan with great picks. Yep, Moscow, Svalbard, Panama, and then Shanghai, Thailand, Scott. Great picks because you have the one turn, uh, turn bonus in uh, Scandinavia. You have quite a safe bonus for uh, Central America. Then you have the uh, two-turn bonus of East China and another safe bonus in mm -hmm. Antarctica. So, all in all, very good picks. Yeah, as Fisher says, though, Scandinavia can't quite be a one-turn because Sweden's not touched. Oh, it's two-turn. Uh, my bad. Yeah, the only one... No, there isn't even a one turn. I don't think there is one on this map. Uh, no. Um, my bad, then. I, I thought that Scandinavia was the one turn bonus <laughs> no, because thought, I'm tired. I thought it was, too, until this said that. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. Um, yeah, there's no one turn bonus on this map. And Scandinavia is not that great of a two turn bonus to focus on. So his first pick should have been East China and uh, Southeast Asia. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we'll compare that for up to your who went Svalbard for number one, and then Malaysia. It followed Malaysia? by Moscow, Panama, Scott, and Australia. That's an interesting pick in Malaysia. Malaysia? Um, I would understand Malaysia a little bit more if you were going Australia, but um, there's no really supplement pick that he does for... In, in for uh, Malaysia. I mean, he does have the sixth pick as Australia, but that's overshadowed by the uh, fifth pick in a Antarctica, so. Uh, not a big fan of these picks. Hmm. So. Anyways. Yep. So we will see. We'll I think see out. Then. I think out of the two, Schwenigen has the pick advantage, and somewhat of a positioning advantage, because of the East China being able uh, to. Uh, well, actually, he gets uh, Central America, so it doesn't quite matter. Uh, but he's able to counter Haraptir's picks a little bit better than what Haraptir ends up getting. So we see a pick and positioning advantage from Swan again. Yeah, and we do see Cropsier got his first, second, and fifth picks. So he Which knows... that... Go ahead. Yeah, that fifth pick in Antarctica isn't really going to help him out much. Yeah. He just let he just knows that Swan has Moscow and Panama, so he knows he's not going to be able to get Scandinavia very easily. So he's probably. He will probably focus focus either in Scott or Malaysia, neither of which are really great expanding. He can get Antarctica in two turns, but three turns for Indonesia. Uh huh. And then you know, Zvenigan has that Shanghai, which counters it. 
I don't know why you would do this, but uh, Raptors here could uh, go for Australia, and oh, yeah. it would it, it would be it wouldn't be that efficient, but uh, it it definitely would be about two turns. You could probably do it in two Three. turns. No, no, I don't. That you know, four there turns. would. Yeah, that that four would up. be a stumbling block. So you could, yeah. If you could have gotten it in two turns, then Australia would have been a little bit interesting. Yeah, if he had had like South Australia instead of Scott as the higher atta higher option, then he would be able to get that in two turns, and that might be a viable option. Yeah, that's that's why I was wondering why he made Scott before Australia, because uh, if if I were to get down to my uh, fourth or fifth picks, I would want something that actually supplements that Indo pick. And he has nothing that supplements that Indo pick. Yeah. And hmm. conversely, Svenigan got his first or his uh, yeah his first third or first second and fourth or something. No, first third and fourth. So he knows that Frotier is in Svalbard, but that's the only one that he knows of. And they both know that either opponent is around that area. Yep. So at least I think. Proctor should guess that Swinigan is going to be somewhere around there. Well, yeah, that he should know that know it because he had one of his guys, one of his starts yeah. there. So, yeah, we have positioning and pick advantage going to Swinigan here. And we see that first turn, Proctor focusing in South Pole, uh, while Swinigan focuses in Central America, which. I think both most logical one to go for mm -hmm. because um, going for Scandinavia would be dangerous considering that Schwenigen is nearby and uh, so that makes South Pole his best, best option with Antarctica and Schwenigen um, knowing that his East China pick is going to take three turns decides to go for Central America. <laughs> and so turn two, both of them finish off their three bonuses. And Frontier moves into uh, Norway while Svenigan moves into Jing Jing Jiangxi. Mm -hmm. So Schwenigan just as as always, biding his time and waiting until the la uh, the uh, most logical time to make his appearance in Scandinavia, N and knowing, yeah, knowing that Heroptatir is going to take at least one or two more turns to get Scandinavia. <sighs> and turn four, he puts eight down there. And uh, as Frontier finishes off Indonesia, they meet in Taiwan, Philippines. So that's one point where they're going to have to be fighting, and then that other one in Moscow, Romansk. Now, mm, I think Frontier made the uh, wrong move in being the first to go on the offensive, because uh, now he's given Schwenigen the uh, total army advantage here. Uh, in the in Europe, so we're gonna see Schwinnigan probably winning Europe in this matchup, but we'll see if Schwinnigan can hold off in China and Asia. Yeah, and interestingly, after turn five, Schwinnigan is up thirty armies total to twenty-two armies. So that's a significant advantage so early in the game. Right, and and that's because Heroptatir may it made the first move. He's going going for uh Schwenigen pretty aggressively. I mean I think even Sun Tzu uh said something about uh, how you should if you have the chance to go onto the offensive, you should wait until your opponent goes onto the offensive. Because your opponent is going to use much more resources before you do. Because marching an army, you know, eats up more resources than 
staying put in the camp and waiting for your enemy to come to you. And we, we see this this principle is followed in this game by the fact that Herodotus here had to overcome two twos to get over there. So it really loses him that matchup in Europe. And he realizes it and re he retreats back to Norway. And I think his thought pattern is maybe try to get that Scandinavian bonus in so that he can gain an income advantage and gain back the positional advantage over there. Yep. And so, as we continue on to uh, turn six, we see a noticeable gr group in Hong Kong. It seems he's going to break Thailand and go offensive there, as he also moved into Murmansk to push up a little bit in there. However, for up here getting that many guys in the Philippines has a... He could have attacked... And if he had attacked, then he would have broken into Taiwan. Yeah. Um, um, the chances uh, are like uh, above 70% for a 10 overcoming. No, I think it's more like 50 to 60% when uh, a 10 overcoming a 6. So, um, is it worth the chance? Maybe, 10 overcoming maybe. a 6 is like really really high chance is it yeah because that's 60 percent yeah so I guess he would have he could have gone for it. it it was it was weird and then while this is happening Svenigan took Southeast Asia so now he's up by three reinforcements so now from here not only is he fighting back from an army deficit of 38 to 32? He's also down three reinforcements. Yeah, uh, Intimidator corrected me. 10 versus 6 was actually 90%, so yeah. uh, that would have been a great move. Never mind. He's. Yeah. So. But. Heroptus here would have had to predict that Swinigan wasn't going to focus too much on Taiwan so yeah it would have been a gamble to attack because if he had put more there then he would have just been down even more armies when when you're playing players this great you sometimes have to take that risk so because if he had taken that risk he would be in a great position right now Yep, and he just said on Skype that seeing on the turn earlier that he wasn't able to break uh, China, he got last move and predicted that he wouldn't attack China this turn either. That was why he only mm. put that many. Yeah, if if his agrees that if if he had broken into East China, it, it, this game would be much longer than nine turns. It would be a pretty interesting game here on out, but. And not not doing that, he has lost the income advantage and now is losing the um, positioning advantage and it looks like Schwinnigan is just going to wreck him after this. And after that, it seems that Frobtier fo is focusing a lot in Norway and also moved up to Hawaii. Don't know how, how much uh, being able to counter C Central America will help out Rock here. Yeah, but he gives up Indonesia, and that puts him down eight to fifteen. So now yeah. he's down by seven, and that that makes Even it extremely difficult to come back, especially since he's not able to really get an easy bonus right now because Chev is still threatening Scandinavia with Moscow. He is great position, uh, positioning Rapetir, but at this point, you you don't want position at, at, at this point. You want income over Schwinnigan to make up that difference because Schwinnigan has had higher income for quite a while. So now that positioning advantage is really overlapped by total army and income. So we're we're seeing that. Uh, Schwenigan is just obviously beating the crap out of this guy after this.
Oh, he does break on turn 8 East China, which helps even it out a little bit. Yeah, but at this point, yet again, Schwanigan just kicking some ass. Then final move, final turn, they both play their second uh, reinforcement cards. And it seems like he's giving uh, then again Indonesia, and then he hits into Hong Kong, losing all of his guys in East China. And that lets then again get both East China and Indonesia. It, however, Crowdtrier does manage to get him out of Scandinavia at least, but you know that doesn't even it out because now Zvenigan's up at 19 reinforcements, mm -hmm. and crop tier down at eight. He well, he could get in Scandinavia, putting him up to 11, and then he would be in a decent position to get eventually at least uh, West Russia. But you know by the time he's already fighting back from such a deficit that he wouldn't be able to keep up an expansion. Mm -hmm. And also the positions of Scandinavia and West Russia, he wouldn't really have much else to expand to besides the uh, Europe. Yeah, he, that's not gonna help. All he could really get is West Russia and then yeah, Greenland or something. Yeah, completely just dominated at that point by Schwenigen. So after that, Kropteer admitted defeat. Svenigen took the win. Good game, propped it here. Congratulations, Zvenigan, for winning the second ever Warlight live streamed tournament. Oh, by wow. the what? <laughs> really, I, I'm glad that Schwenigan came out of retirement <laughs> to play this tournament because it, um, it was it was very informative because his strategy is. One of the his strategies are some of the best in Warlight, and it really helps with uh, with other players who are watching this look at somebody who's able to predict that well. And you know, it, we're not only you know analyzing it; he's actually telling us in, in the chats and in, on Skype, you know, exactly you know why he did what he did. So it was very informative coming from this one again. I think. Yeah, I think all in all it was a great tur uh, tournament. We had a few upsets, <laughs> with Fizzer being knocked out by Doctor D and Hey 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 being knocked out by Propteer. But upsets are part of the game. Part of the game. It's it's fun to watch. I, I was expecting this ending round to be Hey 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 versus Schwenigen, but. Rock is here playing that a better game over Hey Hey Hey. That was just very well done. Indeed. Hmm. So I think next week we'll do another 1v1. I'll start talking to the uh, 2v2 ladder players uh, about perhaps throwing a 2v2. Uh, live tournament, but for now, I, I really think one v one is going to be what we're doing for quite a while. Yeah, it's the easiest to commentate and the quickest to go on because you don't have as many people to organize and everything. Yeah. Um, other than that, the other options I was thinking about playing with were. Um, actually a no fog game but I think with Schwinnigan coming back and showing us you know how uh, you know that uh, that fog really makes a difference in gameplay uh, I think we're going to have to keep it with uh, one view uh, strategic 1v1 settings so all in all great tournament yep Yeah. Um, about our two v two game, uh, 
I, I, I'm not providing commentary. Uh, it's going to be completely one-sided from Mythonian and Casey Scrag. Yeah, that interview. was played like before we even thought of live streaming or whatever. Yeah, well, it was funny because at the end of the game, I actually told them about my ideas of doing a live stream and told them that I, w I would like it yep. uh, if he came by. So it, it it's it. What's interesting about Methonian's uh, Let's Plays is the fact that he's recording them as he's playing. So, of course, he waits until the end of the game to post everything on YouTube. Uh -huh. Because... <laughs> well, it's like, even really then bad. it takes, like, weeks, because I've got so much recorded. Oh, gosh. I've got hours and hours and hours of video that I still need to upload. And then you have to uh, cut it and put it in the... Oh well, it's like most of it's already done with that. It's just can't upload it fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah, yeah, it, yeah like Stroin again said, it, it takes away ninety percent of the skill because I, I think most of the skill in this game has to deal with being able to predict uh, where your opponent is and how your opponent is responding to the situation. Um. The other option that we want Fizzer to play with is hiding the winners so that while we're broadcasting, you know, people might be able to go to the tournament and see the winner, but as we're broadcasting, nobody will actually know the winners unless we say so. And then the second option I wanted to play with is actually uh, being able to click on a player and see their perspective with the fog. That's done for the next update, the uh, first one, or the second one. Hmm. Well, that should help things be a little bit more interesting and a little bit uh, less predictable, or a little bit more of a surprise when we actually, when the people actually find things out like that. It won't show the winners. Yeah. That... That'll definitely work. Um, anyways, thank you, Fizzer, for uh, actually changing my settings into a real-time tournament. <laughs> um, okay, so anyone in the chat or anything have any other suggestions about things we could improve for the future? Anything you'd like to see done? Anything that you think was done badly today that could be done better tomorrow or next week or whatever? Okay. Well, yeah, we could probably block the lower right box, but I think... Well, that displays reinforcements and things like that. I mean, I can block that pretty easily. I mean, it takes me... Ten seconds to put something there, but yeah, yeah then we, then we wouldn't the correct start time. <laughs> the in, yeah. We wouldn't be able to see the incomes, and I don't well, feel like counting it. We could. It's just they wouldn't. Yeah, I can have it only part of the stream, it. part of the overlay. Yeah. Yeah, well, like Swing again said, when you enter the game through the tournament page, that will show the winner. So. Yeah, yeah. So we won't really need to block it. But alternatively, what I can do is I can actually uh, feed Methonian the uh, games, the link to the games. So, it, it, yeah, it's a block is the tournament screen. And what I'll do is I'll feed Methonian the game so he can go directly to the game instead of having to go through the tournament page. So that'll be fine. Yeah. Like I can have a a separate bracket thing that doesn't show who wins until we actually announce it or something. Yeah. And the only ones that we'll announce is probably uh, either when we're going we're to not skip going it. To, yeah, or yeah, when we're, we're actually going to go it. over it. After we're done with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Well, that sounds pretty good. Looking forward to next week. Hopefully we have an even larger turnout next week. And hopefully it doesn't take us so long to get a last person to join. 
Yeah. Hopefully we don't have any technical difficulties of people not being able to join the game. Yeah, and this time, and this time I'll make the time zones a little less confusing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure that I update it in according to uh, D DST because I realized that that was a little bit confusing. Uh, well, Fizzer, it wasn't exactly your fault because you're right. I'm technically in the time zone GMT minus five, but when you, you but uh, the way that I think of it is that I'm in the time zone GMT minus six. It's just that DST is applied. If that makes any sense. That's yeah, the way. What, I, what Fizzer was mentioning though was the fact that he, uh, David, user wasn't able to join the game. Oh, all right. Yeah. But I think having it set to real time evened that out. That was definitely an advantage because those people, who, or the people who weren't going to be active, could actually be booted. Was anybody actually booted? I don't think so. But you know, just having the possibility there. Yeah. Um, I thought a few of the people were going to end up booted, but let's see. Oh yeah, G W Bush ended up being booted. Oh, he did? So, yeah, he's not going to be oh, okay. next live tournament. And uh, I'm not going to automatically uh, invite him like I did this tournament. Uh, everybody else seemed to actually get in and play. Yep. Wait a minute, uh, was Kaiser? Yeah, Kaiser ended up did it too. Oh. Uh. Okay, well, once again, congratulations to Shavinigan, which that's probably we'll butchering the name again, but, you know, close enough. And we'll see you next week. Yep, as always, this has been Methonian. And Lolalot. <laughs> and thank you guys for watching.